Hi everyone, Sarah here from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery with another video for you. I'd like to welcome you, especially if you're new to my channel and you haven't seen any of my videos before, welcome on board. It's nice to see you. Do check out our channel as well. We have hundreds of other videos all about hand embroidery, lots of different subjects. We've got some projects, we've got um, quite an extensive stitch library. We give stuff away, we've got some book reviews, so there's lots going on there. So do check that out. I'm sure you'll find something you like. So in today's video, I'm going to check out um, quite an exciting way to put your embroidery designs onto your fabric. And also for two lucky viewers, I'm also going to give some stuff away for free. So do keep watching to see what I'm giving away and how you can get your hands on it. So I thought I would have a go with some products from DNC. I saw these on their website and I thought they looked quite exciting to try. Um, and something as well I think would be great for beginners if you're just starting out in your embroidery journey might help you along the way a little bit. So let's have a look at what we've got. So I've got a selection here of DNC's Magic Paper. Um, sounds quite exciting. And basically what it is, is dissolvable paper. So you draw on the paper and you stick your design to your fabric and you stitch it and then you dissolve away the paper. And I'll just show you what that looks like here. So there's a little bit of it here. And if I just peel it away, it's sticky. So it's like a sort of interfacing, quite thin. Um, you can see through, see my fingers underneath, but the sticky backing and then you stick that to your fabric, draw your design on your paper, and off you go. So that's the principle of it, and then you dissolve it when you've finished. So let's look at some different kinds that they've got. So they've got just a plain one. This is just plain magic paper sheets. There's two in a pack here, um, and there's nothing on it, as you can see. So you can just draw your designs onto this. This is quite good if you want to do something quite freestyle, um, and you like drawing, or you want to do something where you're having a little, a little bit of a play with it. And so this is good for that one. So they've also got that paper with a grid on it, so some squared magic paper. So it's the same stuff, but they printed a grid on it here. This one is great for cross stitches, if you like cross stitching, especially if you want to put a cross stitch design onto something that's not a traditional cross stitch fabric, like an Ada. If you wanted to do it on a jumper or a t-shirt, you can still do your cross stitch counted design, but you can do it on something else as well by following the grid on the paper. So that one's really great if you wanted to use it for that. Um, also, if you've got some designs with straight lines in, I can imagine this would be quite good for that to line up the straight lines in your design. Then they've also got pre-printed ones, got a couple of them here. Got lots of designs for this one, and I think this would be great for beginners if you're interested in practicing your stitches and not worrying so much about putting your design on at this stage. And you just want to have a go at practicing some stitches. These would be really great for that. And you can see some of them are cross stitch ones. And then on here, we've got some line ones, which you can interpret with some running stitch or some um, back stitch or any way you wanted. And you can just cut that out and put that design straight on. So really great for beginners or just if you want a little fun project to have a go at. They've got a couple of other things in this range that I just wanted to show you as well because they're slightly different from the paper. Um, this is a soluble canvas so this is a bit more like a plastic, um, quite fine again and this isn't sticky so what you have to do with this one is tack this one or baste this one to your embroidery fabric and then you can stitch on top of that and then you can dissolve the canvas away so it works slightly differently but this one would be really great for needle pointers out there i know there's a lot of you watching um and you can put your needle point designs onto again some clothing or any fabric that's not a traditional needle point fabric you just follow the holes in in the canvas and you can do it that way so a really good idea if you're a needle pointer I picked up this one as well because I thought this one was quite interesting. So this is an Ada fabric, so a bit more of a traditional cross stitch fab fabric that you might do your cross stitch on. Um, and this one's actually got, if I turn it over, got a grid already marked on it. So if you wanted to chart your own designs, if you wanted to make a sampler, this would be great for that because obviously you can follow the lines and follow the grid um, rather than having to count hundreds of holes. So this would be great for that sort of um, application. I'm going to hang on to this one. I'm not going to go any further with this one in this video because I've got another idea that I think would be quite good for this so we might um, we might use that one in a different video. So I'm going to give away some of these in a little bit but first let me show you how to use it and I'm going to concentrate on the paper versions and um, not the canvas one in this instance I'm just going to have a look at the paper and show you how to use it. So I'm going to use a simple design and I'm going to use my acorn 
and oak leaf design this is on the free stuff page on my website We've got loads of free designs on there if you want to have a go check out the link in the description below to get to those and i'm just going to use my simple acorn um, and oak leaf design and i'm going to just try it on the blank magic paper um, just to show you how to do this design so i've got a little bit that i've already practiced with here now just make sure that you don't waste <laughs> any of this um, you can just um, keep all these cutouts you can see I've just kept this I'm not throwing any of it away and I'm just going to try and get it in the smallest area that I can so that I can use as much of this paper as possible so what I'm going to do is to trace this design onto here now you can put this on several different ways um, I'm going to use a light box we do have a video on how to transfer your design onto fabric we've got five different ways to do that you can check that video out up here these are the traditional ways of doing it and they all work really well and you would use different ones for different occasions so you can use those to get your design onto your paper um, I'm just going to trace it a nice simple one so let's get that done now so I'm going to use a light box. If you don't have a fancy light box like I've got, you can just use a window as well with some some daylight or some sun coming through it, preferably that will work just as well. But I've got my light box I'm going to use. So turn that on. Right, there's my design that I've printed off. And here is my paper. So I'm just going to position that so it uses up as little of the paper as I can so I've got more to use for another project later and this is the point I just want to mention pens and what you draw it on with we're going to wash this off so if you don't use a waterproof pen or a pen that's meant to come off with water you're going to um, ruin your embroidery threads so you could either use a water soluble pen like this one here or you can use a permanent pen waterproof pen so just check that before you use it to make sure you've got one of those because you don't want the ink ruining your embroidery stitches so i'm just going to trace over that i can see it nice and clearly and the great thing about this paper that i discovered when i was practicing is if you're not very confident with your tracing skills you can just go over it and and do it again you can do another line it doesn't matter all these lines are going to disappear so if you decided, oh, that line's gone a bit wobbly, just straighten it up and it doesn't matter, which is great because I was thinking, why would I use this paper instead of just using a normal transfer method? And I thought, well, that's a good reason because otherwise I'm drawing straight onto my embroidery fabric and if I mess it up, I've got a problem. Whereas in this instance, it's easy to correct it if I need to. So just drawn that onto the paper there turn the light box off you'll be able to see that so nice and clear on my magic paper and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut around that fairly closely so I can save some more of that paper for another occasion Keep that for later. I'll just sort of cut around it. Like so. Cut my shape out. Okay, so now we're going to stick this onto my fabric. Now I'm just going to do this on a piece of cotton just to demonstrate with um, for you. I just want to show you how to do this. So I'm just going to stick it in the middle of my cotton. So I just need to peel off the backing. and then you can just position it and the good thing about it is it's a little bit see-through so if you wanted to line it up with a pattern if you had a pattern fabric or you wanted to put it on a shirt between a seam you can see where the seams are so that was really really helpful I'm just going to bunk it right in the middle there just pat it down it sticks quite well this does and also if you've got it in the wrong place you put it on you think oh i don't want it there it's not quite straight you can actually peel it off and restick it i wouldn't do that loads of times but you can certainly do it a few times so you can reposition it if you want to so i've got my design on my fabric and i just wanted to show you a couple of other samples that i did because as i was practicing with this this um, became apparent to me that this also work really well on dark fabrics and I've got one of our black linens here that we sell in the shop and normally if you want to work on black you've got to prick and pounce it on um, 
with a white powder or you've got to use a white pencil and it's quite difficult but with this you can just draw on the paper with a black pen and you can stick it on your black fabric and you can see how easily it shows up so really really great for dark fabrics this if you wanted to do it on a denim jacket this would be brilliant um, because it shows up on any color and all of the other techniques that's quite difficult to do so really good for dark fabrics and then i got to thinking about different kinds of fabric as well and i thought oh, well i'll have a go on a face cloth so this is obviously quite a textured material I thought would it work on a face cloth so I did actually try it there we go and I took this little um dragonfly design from one of their pre-printed ones you can see what that looks like and I stuck it on and I've actually stitched it and we'll have a go at dissolving it um a bit later on and see what that looks like and it sticks really well because I thought all oh, this this texture on here this pile on this face cloth is going to make this quite difficult and it stuck really well um you can just see it sort of comes up at the edges but this is pretty well stuck down and it was quite easy to stitch on as well so really really great for different textures of fabrics you could do it on all sorts of different things with this so that was a, a really enlightening moment um, that you can use it in lots of different ways one more thing I just did want to mention was when you stick this down it does just stiffen the surface up you can just see how that doesn't bend so easily so quite a nice surface to stitch on as well so if you had a very fine fabric this is just going to give you a little bit of extra stability to stitch on as well which really did help so what I'm going to do now remove those so I'm going to stitch this one very quickly and then we'll have a go at dissolving the paper and see what that looks like so I'm going to stitch this in um, some stranded cottons I've got some variegated ones here that'd be quite nice for this I'm just going to do a simple design because I want to show you the next stage really so I'm going to frame that up and stitch that in those but just want to mention a couple of points at this stage do check that your threads are color fast because we're going to wet it in a minute and if they're not it's all going to run so you can check the washing label on it it's got washing instructions it's color fast if you've lost the label for any reason it's easy to check just snip a little end off your thread put it on a damp paper towel just leave it for a while and see if the color runs um, and if it does don't use it <laughs> basically so do check that and the other thing that you might need to think about is pre-washing your fabric first it can shrink so fabric is quite stiff has got a dressing in it and the dressing will come out and the fabric can shrink so you may want to pre-wash them first especially if you're doing on an item of clothing that's new and hasn't been worn yet so just two things to think about before you start stitching so I'm going to use a few different stitches for this. I'll go through those at the end, but I'm just going to show you my thread. So this is a stranded cotton floss and I've got three strands in the needle. So while the stitching's going on, let's do the giveaway. So I've got two sets of these to give you and I'm going to give you a set of pre-printed designs, um, one of the soluble canvases as well and a face cloth if you want to have a go on the face cloth. So there's two sets of those and I'm also going to throw in the other pack of the plain magic paper. I'll put that in one of the sets as well and then I'll put the one with squares on in the other set so you get the same amount of paper. So those are the two um, things that I'm going to give away. So all that you need to do to be one of the two winners of our giveaway is to leave a comment below this video with the words show me the magic put that down here you can just put show me the magic we will pick the winner at random but if you want to get a bit creative with it it's always great to read your comments as well we had some great poems last time so i'll leave that up to you so today is Friday the 15th of July 2022 and we will do the draw in a week's time on Friday the 22nd of July 2022. So you need to get your comments in by then please and we will draw the winner at random and we will leave a comment to your comment so do make sure that you check those on the deadline day to see if you have won because if we can't get hold of you within a week we will have to draw it again and that would be a shame to miss out. So if you're one of our two winners, we will send it to you wherever you are in the world for free. So do have a go because somebody's got to win these two giveaways and it might just be you. So good luck, everyone. And let's have a look at how our acorn is getting on. OK, so that's my last little stitch going in now. So I finished my stitching so I did three strands throughout and I've done a back stitch around the leaf and the acorn here and just put this colour into the leaf just to tie the two together and again a back stitch around the acorn cup and just filled it in with some little cross stitches here and we have both of these stitches in our stitch library if you want to know more about those. Okay so all done let's get it out of the hoop and have a go at dissolving the paper. So all we have to do now is dunk it in some water just sort of 
finger temperature really and it doesn't take much to get it off so I'm just going to dip this one in first just got a bowl of water here you can just do it under the tap I don't have a tap handy in my filming bit just going to rub it a little bit you can sort of feel it go a little bit gooey disappears quite quickly so just keep rubbing it just until you can't feel that it's going to basically glue really you can always take it out and dry and if it's still a bit stiff and you can feel it you can just dunk it again um, I do recommend dunking the whole piece and not just a bit with a paper on because it might change the rest of the fabric right that feels pretty good so I'm just going to squeeze the water out like that I've got a towel here I can just put that out on I'm going to hang that up in a minute, but while I'm here I'm just going to do the face cloth as well, just to see how that comes out. Now these are meant for getting wet, so <laughs> be okay. And again the same with this. Because I just cut around my shape quite carefully, I'm not getting, not having to um, dissolve more than I really need to dissolve. Just feel it there because this is nice and soft you can feel this on a little bit more so that stiffness is going out of it now and you've just got your stitches you make sure you finish your stitches off properly I don't want them coming undone at this stage right that feels good looks lovely right just give it a squeeze water's gone slightly cloudy so that's obviously the glue coming out of it there so I should just put that to one side lay these out so quick look while they're wet yep it's lovely all that glue is gone you can feel that that's nice so I'm going to hang these out to dry and then we'll have a look at them once they're dry okay so they're nice and dry now so let's just have a little look at those so I've got my acorn one first and the first thing I notice is it is still a little bit stiff still got some of that um, dressing from the magic paper in it so I didn't wash it all out and it's kind of made my stitches a tiny little bit sort of flat the glue stuck the stitches together so I think in hindsight I would just do it for a little bit longer make sure all of that paper is well and truly out of course I could just dunk it again um, and make sure that's out so just something to think about there on that one but it's come out quite nice other than that so let's have a little look at the face cloth and I think this is really where this paper comes into its own because you can just do this on all sorts of weird and wonderful fabrics and it was quite easy to do um, and that's come out really nicely and I just want to show you the back of this Because I get quite a lot of questions about the back and what um, backing do I put on if I'm doing a tea towel or a towel or something like that. I don't put a backing on, um, I just leave the stitches as they are and as long as you start and finish them off securely then you shouldn't have a problem with it at all. So do check out my videos on how to start and finish your stitches for that. So just nice neat um, good practices on the back and you should be fine. You don't need to put a backing fabric on the back of a towel or a tea towel. So I had fun playing around with that. I hope you enjoyed watching um, and have learned something from it and maybe you want to have a go yourself. This material has been around for quite a long time. I know there's a machine embroidery version of it as well that's been around for many, many years. So some of you may have tried it, but if you're a beginner, this is definitely something worth considering. It's got fours and against. Um, you do need to do a little bit of preparation, make sure you're not using pens that will run um, and you might want to wash your fabric etc um, but we do have those other five methods as well which are traditional methods of putting our design that don't involve any glue because sometimes I'm a bit nervous about glue and embroidery together but that's just another option if you want to try that. So thanks for watching everyone. Do give this video a thumbs up if you liked it so more people get to see it. We have more content and more perks for you on our Patreon page and on our channel members as well. You can check out Patreon here and if you click the join button that will tell you all about our channel membership too. And um, We've got another video here for you that you might like to watch and I'll see you next time.